Hey y'all, welcome back to another ballistics gel test. Today we have Hornady Precision Hunter, their 178 grain ELDX load in 30-06. Let's see how it does, but I do want to mention that a lot of people did not like my take on Hornady Precision Hunter and 6.5 Creedmoor. All I was doing was reporting the fact, sorry not sorry, it ticked some of y'all off. Go back and watch that video after you watch this one if you haven't. Let's see if the 30-06 does any better. And here is the box for that Hornady Precision Hunter. 30-06 load, the 178 grain ELDX bullet. Let's flip it around to the back. Here is your promo information. You can stop, pause, and read all that if you would like to. Taking a look right here, I want to point out right here is what the ELDX is supposed to do. A lot of controversy around this bullet, not only on my channel, but in the shooting world as a whole. A lot of controversy. We'll see how it measures up flipping the box around. Here's your ballistics information, muzzle velocity 2750. We will see if we hit that. Let's open this up and take a look at one of them. Here we go, nice clean brass, nothing fancy, nothing special. And here we go, there is that ELDX bullet. It's got a red ballistic tip. Let's go shoot it and see how it does. And the test rifle today sitting on this cooler here is my Tika T3X Superlight Stainless Chambered in 30 6 Of course, it has a 22.3 inch barrel. And up top, it's got a Leopold VX3 HD 4.5 to 14 by 40 scope. And coming on back, of course, it's got one of my handmade leather cartridge cuffs holding five 30 6 shells. And flipping it around to the other side, it has my elk design on here. Check out my website, masonleather.com. I would absolutely love to make you one. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And let's go ahead and take a look at the velocities for that 178 grain Hornady ELDX load out of the 30-06. Our high was 26.88. Our low was 26.19 and our average was 26.57. And I am down here at the blocks after shooting the 178 grain ELDX. That thing just flings the blocks around. It hit this first block, which of course was lined up here, flipped it in the air, slammed down right there. And then I was testing another load right here, the uh, 150 grain Deer Season XP 30-06 load, and that just flings the block straight off the table. So let me get these set back up and we can take a look at penetration and everything else. All right, I've got everything rearranged. Let's take a look at the penetration for that ELDX bullet. So we did capture all three bullets. Two of them held together pretty well and penetrated pretty deep. They're both right there, neck and neck with each other. Those two are at like right there, the 22 inch mark. And then the third bullet is way back here in the first block and it, it completely came apart. That is just the base of the jacket. The core of the bullet broke up and is in a bunch of pieces throughout this first block. So penetration wise, I mean, I guess we'll count that one at 15 inches. But to me, that is a fail on that bullet. I mean, you can, can whine and moan that, you know, that's what ELDX is supposed to do, but it's not. Just flip around to the back of the box and read what they say. It is not supposed to be frangible like that. Um, these two didn't. These two held together. These two performed very, very well. That one did not, in my estimation. There will be people in the comments whining about it, saying, oh, it's supposed to do that. Well, how do you explain these two then? I don't know. Anyway, let's dig these out and take a look. And I will go ahead and take a look at the wound cavity up here in the front block. It does have a pretty nasty looking wound cavity, wound track. They start expanding pretty quickly at about the one inch mark, blow up, leave that wound track coming on back and go all the way out to, I mean, the 12 to 13 inch mark. So it, it definitely hits like a hammer and dumps a lot of energy. And here are the three bullets recovered from the ballistics gel from that Hornady Precision Hunter 178 grain ELDX load out of the 30-06. Guys, I wish I could say that this wasn't a fail, 
but it was a fail and I can already hear the crying and whining in the comments from people who just love this stuff. And hey, that's all well and good. Will it kill a deer? Yeah, absolutely. Will it kill an elk? Yeah, absolutely. You hit in the right spot. But I've heard too many horror stories at this point across calibers. And here we have the proof. So let's get into it. We had two bullets that performed really, really well. And then one that totally crapped the bed and ruined it for us. So as far as weight retention goes, we saw 147 grains, 148 grains, and then 64 grains for that bullet on the right because the only recoverable piece was this main section of jacket. We had complete jacket and core separation. The core shattered into a bunch of pieces. This was the main chunk that was left, and that is not not what this ammo is supposed to do. Read the back of the box. People can say all day, oh, it's supposed to blow up and be frangible. That's not how they advertise it. You can claim whatever you want. That's not what's advertised, so it's a fail. That bullet in the middle there was recovered complete as one unit out of the gel. Then the core fell out of the jacket. I'm not too concerned with that. It was together when it was in the gel, so I'm counting it as together. Make that what you will. The average retained weight for all three of these combined is 120 grains and that works out to 67 percent weight retention and it's not the weight retention as a whole that i have a problem with it's that we have complete jacket and core separation and fragmentation with one of the bullets and not the other two so it's inconsistency that's the problem you just don't know what's going to happen when you pull the trigger with this stuff and then on to expansion we saw 0 0.77 0 0.73 and then 1.04 inches with that chunk of jacket there on the right for an average of 0.85 inches that works out to 2.7x expansion but that is exacerbated very much so by that jacket piece there on the right that we had jacket core separation with and then on to velocity our high velocity was 2688 our low was 2619 for an average of 2657 versus the factory build velocity of 2750 so we came in 93 feet per second slow on average not the biggest deal. I've seen a lot worse than that. And then on to penetration. Like I said before, two of these bullets did really well. We saw 22 inches, 22 inches, and then 15 inches for that chunk of jacket there. So inconsistency reigns the day here with this Hornady Precision Hunter. And that works out to an average of 20 inches of penetration. And then on to kinetic energy with a 178 grain bullet going on average 2,657 feet per second. That works out to 2,790 foot pounds at the muzzle. All right, y'all, you knew it was coming. If you've been here, if you've been following the channel, if you've been following my ammo tests, you knew it was coming. Hornady Precision Hunter, 30-06, 178 grain ELDX bullet. I wish I could say this wasn't a fail, but it was. This ammo test was a fail. Why was it a fail? Because you flip it around, you read the back of the box, these are not designed to blow up and fragment. Y'all can argue about it in the comments if you want. I've got objective facts here from a test that I just didn't witness with my own eyes. So did you. It is what it is. A lot of people are going to be upset with what I have to say, but I don't know how you can refute it. It's right there in front of you. So why is it a fail? Because two bullets performed and one didn't. Inconsistent. Very inconsistent. There are two loads from all the ammo I have tested so far, and I'm coming up on testing a hundred different loads of ammo, and I've got hundreds more coming. I'm not stopping anytime soon. There are two lines of ammo that continue to provide inconsistent performance across calibers. Not just in one caliber, not just in another, across calibers. And those two loads are Hornady Precision Hunter with the ELDX bullet and Winchester Deer Season XP. Every time I test one of these ammo, well not every time, sometimes they work. Most of the time, there's a failure if not more than one. Either a bullet will blow completely apart or they won't expand at all. Crazy stuff that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's really disappointing. So with this particular 30-06 Hornady Precision Hunter load, we had two bullets that did pretty darn good. They expanded, they held their weight together pretty good, they penetrated pretty deep out to 22 inches, which I'm really happy with. I like to see that with a 30-06 sort of medium game hunting load. 
Then we had another bullet that just didn't do that. It kind of blew up, it fragmented, it only penetrated the main chunk to 15 inches. I wish that all three would either blow up or all three would hold together. Sort of like, I don't know, Federal Fusion seems to do every single time. They just kind of work every single time across calibers. And then sometimes there's stuff that just doesn't. So by all means, make your own opinions about this stuff. If you want to use it, go for it, but I won't be. And check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade, and I would love to make you something. And there are hundreds of reviews on my website, so you can see what real hunters have to say about their mason leather gear. And also, tons of photos showing all the customizable options, including name, initial, and caliber stamping, as well as wild game designs and more. Everything is handmade by me right here in the USA. I would love to be a part of your hunt through my leather gear. And it helps support this channel so I can bring you more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests and lots of other cool stuff in the future. The link will be in the video description and the pinned comment or you can just type masonleather.com into your web browser. And click one of these cards for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.